Did you know some veggies help control blood sugar levels? In this video, I'll talk about the best and worst veggies you should watch out for. Does this mean they're off limits? That you can never eat these vegetables? No, that's not the case. It means you need to be more careful and not eat as much as the better options because they can raise blood sugar levels more significantly. So in this video, I've listed nine of the best veggies and five of the ones you should be more cautious about, the worst ones. What did I consider for this list? Just to clarify before we start, the portion size is the same, 100 grams for all. You often ask me to classify by unit, but you can't compare a pea to a tomato or cucumber, for example. It's not possible. So it has to be by weight, 100 grams for everyone. Also the glycemic index. What is it? It's when food raises your blood sugar. Diabetics must watch the glycemic index. It helps control blood sugar levels better. Another factor was glycemic load. Odd name, simple concept. Glycemic load is carbs per serving. Diabetics too. Like GI, watch carb amounts. Low GI but high GL still affects you. This also impacts blood sugar levels. Another factor, fiber content. Fiber is a carb your body can't absorb. Compare carbs to fiber content. We call this net carbohydrates. That's the total amount minus the fiber. It's what your body actually absorbs. So I'll include that too. Another key factor is antioxidant content. We know antioxidants boost health, not just for diabetics, but preventing complications. Now let's look at our list. We'll start with the best, then cover the worst. Number one on the best list is eggplant. Per 100 G, eggplant has 6 G carbs and 3 G fiber. So you can eat eggplant worry-free. Why? Eggplant won't spike your blood sugar levels. It's a safe veggie for diabetics. It has fiber which aids digestion and lowers GI. For example, if you eat eggplant before a meal, it'll positively impact the entire meal. So it's really important. There are also many studies on eggplant and cholesterol. Eggplant can improve your cholesterol levels. We know diabetics need to pay extra attention to cholesterol too. What's the leading cause of death in diabetics? Cardiovascular diseases. It's important to highlight excess LDL, the bad cholesterol. Excess cholesterol is the issue. We need cholesterol to live. So cholesterol itself isn't bad. We need it for cell membranes, hormones, vitamin D, testosterone, cortisol, and digestion. The problem is having too much cholesterol. Eating eggplant protects you from that as well. Besides fiber and nutrients, it has added benefits for cholesterol. Eggplant is one of the world's best foods. Many people ask about eggplant juice. I'm talking about eating eggplant, okay? Not eggplant powder or capsules that people often mention. And not eggplant juice either, got it? Eating the whole food is always better to get the most fiber. Agreed? Number two is carrots. Per 100 grams, carrots have 6 G carbs and 2.9 G fiber. Great for diabetics. Many think carrots aren't good for diabetics due to their sweet taste. But that's not true, okay? You can eat carrots in salads or as a snack. I often take them to work. It's interesting. Carrots have beta carotene, which is great for health, especially for vision. Diabetics need to care for their eyesight due to diabetic retinopathy. Heard of it? High blood sugar can harm our vision over time potentially damaging it, so it's crucial to be aware of this. Eating carrots also protects you from this, giving you this extra benefit too. Here's a tip. Take carrots as a snack. This will prevent overeating and consuming excess calories or unhealthy foods, helping control your diabetes. The third vegetable, also one of the world's best, is broccoli. Broccoli contains iron, calcium, and magnesium. It's great for bone health, rich in antioxidants, vitamin A, vitamin C, and fiber. It has many nutrients that boost your health. Per 100 grams, broccoli has 7 grams of carbs and 3 grams of fiber. Excellent. Broccoli provides great satiety due to its volume, helping you feel full and eat less. Broccoli is one of the world's best foods, definitely worth eating. Many people ask if broccoli harms the thyroid and the answer is no. You don't need to worry about it. Even if you have thyroid issues, broccoli won't harm you, okay? There's no need to limit cruciferous veggies because of this. This myth came from a study where rats only ate broccoli. These rats developed goiter and hormonal problems. But this doesn't happen in humans, got it? So it's false that broccoli harms the thyroid. And yes, broccoli is indeed one of the best vegetables and foods. For diabetics, it helps control blood sugar levels. 
And number four is cauliflower. Cauliflower is also cruciferous with 5G carbs and 2.5G fiber per 100G. It's also great for diabetics. Do you prefer broccoli or cauliflower? I prefer broccoli, but cauliflower is a good option too. And vegetable number five is cucumber. Cucumbers have cucurbitacin and are about 95% water. So you're staying hydrated too. We know hydration is key for diabetics to regulate blood sugar and prevent excess hunger as our brain often mistakes thirst for hunger. Did you know that? So eating cucumber gives you this benefit too. Interestingly, 100 G of cucumber has just 2 G of carbs and 1 G of fiber. See, it's great, won't spike your blood sugar. It's packed with nutrients like cucurbitacin, which can boost your health. And number six is coyote. Coyote has 4 G of carbs and 2 G of fiber per 100 G. Do you like coyote? I love it. I eat it almost every day. I add a bit of vinegar. It's a great meal and I'm sure it'll help you control blood sugar levels. You'll feel more full, get fiber, nutrients, and many benefits without consuming excess calories, which we know diabetics also need to watch daily, okay? So eating coyote is good for your health. If you're diabetic, you should definitely try it. And vegetable number seven is radish. Per 100 grams of radish, we have 3 grams of carbs and 1.5 grams of fiber. Radish also won't raise your blood sugar levels. If you're diabetic and like it, it's a great choice. Plus, radishes contain anthocyanin. Have you heard of anthocyanin? It's being studied a lot now for its benefits on blood pressure. If you're diabetic with high blood pressure, radish is a great option. Isn't that interesting? Look at how much you're learning from this video. Radishes also contain antioxidants. What do antioxidants do? They fight free radicals in your body. Many diseases are caused by free radicals. A diet rich in antioxidants can lower your cancer risk. How about that? Did you find this tip helpful? If so, give it a like. Each like helps spread this content to more people. If you're not subscribed, I invite you to join us. I cover diabetes, hormones, thyroid, cholesterol, and health tips. If you enjoy these topics, subscribe to stay updated. Let's move on to number eight on our list, tomatoes. Tomatoes, while not technically a vegetable, can be classified as a fruit depending on who you ask. But I've included it on this list because tomatoes are great for people with diabetes. Tomatoes contain lycopene, which can protect the prostate. Did you know that? They're also rich in vitamin C. Tomatoes can be considered anti-inflammatory due to their overall composition. For every 100 grams of tomato, we get 3.5 grams of carbs and 1.5 grams of fiber. That's quite an interesting nutritional profile. Tomatoes are also low in calories. You can eat tomatoes without worrying about calorie intake. And don't worry about them raising your blood sugar levels. I love tomatoes. I eat them all the time. They're great if you're feeling really hungry. Eating tomatoes is a good strategy to help you feel more full. Because of its large volume, you can eat more, not gain weight, and it won't impact your blood sugar levels. Isn't that interesting? The ninth and final vegetable on our list of the best is arugula. Per 100 grams, arugula has 3 grams of carbs and 2 grams of fiber. That's a great composition for people with diabetes. I'd like to highlight that arugula is also rich in magnesium and copper. Studies show people eating arugula and dark leafy greens had better insulin sensitivity. The body works better due to the fibers and overall composition. If you're diabetic, I suggest adding arugula to your diet. I ate arugula today. Can you see how my diet includes many vegetables? I've already mentioned three I ate recently. Now, which vegetables should you pay more attention to? I've picked five for you to compare and learn about foods. The first veggie on the worst list isn't forbidden. Don't misunderstand. It just needs extra attention. It's beetroot. For 100 G of beetroot, 12 G carbs, 3 G fiber. It's okay, but compare it to radish, cucumber, or arugula. Beetroot raises blood sugar, but has benefits too. It can increase nitric oxide, a vasodilator. It can help relax the arteries. So if you have high blood pressure, beets can also help you. But for blood sugar levels, it falls into our second category. Number two, which surprises many people, is corn. For every 100 grams of corn, we have 25 grams of carbs. Look at that difference. And four grams of fiber. If you have high triglycerides or watch your blood sugar, be extra careful with corn. Number three, which also surprises many, is peas. 
Every 100 grams of peas has 15 grams of carbs and 4 grams of fiber. Many think peas are great for diabetics, but in reality, you need to be a bit careful. I recall a diabetic patient who couldn't control his blood sugar because he ate lots of peas. He told me peas have no taste, so they must be good for diabetics. I see my diet like this. If it's tasteless, I eat a lot. If it's tasty, I don't eat it. Just think about that. Many people think this way. Imagine the quality of life, right? Just imagine what this gentleman's diet was like. I explained, and he understood it's not about taste, but composition. If you overdo it with peas, your blood sugar levels will increase. Number four, which I'm sure you know is most talked about, is potatoes. Per 100 grams, we have 18 grams of carbs and three grams of fiber. So this carb to fiber ratio is a bit worse than the others I mentioned. With more carbs, diabetics need to be more careful with potatoes. And number five, this veggie will surprise many, yams. Per 100 grams of yams, we have 28 grams of carbs and four grams of fiber. Yams are a well-studied vegetable for health benefits. It has various functions, but if you're diabetic, it may raise blood sugar levels. How many veggies from this list do you eat? You've seen that I mentioned I eat several. I want to know which country are you from? What part of the world are you watching this video from? I'm speaking from Porto Alegre. Ah, the cucumber can be pickles, okay? If you prefer, pickles work well too. It's a tasty option that I enjoy. How about you? Now I'll share a suggestion. It's a video where I discuss fruits. Did you know that like veggies, some fruits are better or worse for diabetics? Can you eat fruits? In this video, I explain more about it. So I suggest watching it now. Take care. See you next time.